Okay, I was going to just talk a little bit about um, the thing today brought up some stuff. Uh, that people have this really mistaken notion about um, walking a spiritual path. They think that, you know, if they get on a spiritual path, everything's going to be so easy, you know, and that God's going to be like a big Santa Claus and just going to be so happy that they're paying attention to him, <laughs> that, they, that God's just going to give them everything they want. <laughs> God is not a Santa Claus, okay? <laughs> And, you know, you get in the path in the first few years are easy. It's the honeymoon stage, okay? And everything is going easy breezy and you're just, you know, you're in love and expansion is happening and all of these wonderful things. But, you know, and, and then they want to say, you don't know, I've already got it so easy. They haven't even begun yet. Okay, they're in the kindergarten stage, the first, second, third grade, you know, they're, they're still in grade school. <laughs> you know, then you get to the point where things start to get difficult. And if you're going to walk a path to realization, there's a reason that my book is entitled kundalini from hell to heaven because you go through the difficult part before you get to heaven okay so it's not all fun and games and then when it starts getting difficult and they can't hang anymore they want to blame the teacher the teacher will say something that they don't want to hear they get irate they decide they're going to leave. They're going to try to trash your name. They're going to do everything because they're going to prove themselves right. Okay. And it's usually the ones that come in that are, oh, I want to serve you. I want to be at your feet. Oh, Guru Ji, let me come there. And, you know, nine out of ten, that's the person that's going to be the most vicious and turn like a serpent. Because they want somebody to fulfill their world. They want somebody that's going to, you know, just hand them everything. And then when they don't get what they want, you know, or they hear something they don't agree with, they decide they're going to get nasty. They're going to prove you wrong. They're going to do everything they can to say, you don't know anything. I know. I'm, <laughs> And yet they haven't even started the path or it's the ones that have had a you know a silver spoon in their mouth and they've lived with mommy and daddy for all this time and they're in their 30s okay <laughs> oh no i can take it i'm ready for it and they get out and it's they start whining and oh my god it's so difficult and the roads are too windy and i'm not getting you know I want a bank job. I want to just apply online. Why am I not getting and this? Like, oh my God, go back to mommy and daddy, please. <laughs> so they're not ready for it. And usually, again, that's the type that was with mommy and daddy. And they can tell you everything that's wrong with every guru on the planet. Yet they can't take care of themselves. Okay. So people think it's easy being a guru. They think it's, you know, it's you've got people running and serving you all day. Do you see anybody around me serving me? Okay. They think that every guru is out for big money. They think that every guru is living this lavish lifestyle. And it's not like that at all. Okay. Um don't judge all gurus by these ones that are, you know, name and fame and fortune that have a ton of followers because those are not gurus. Those are ones that are giving you a show like Osho. Maybe that's why his name was Osho because that's what he was about. He was about jokes. He was about party. Do whatever you're going to do. 
You can be a sannyasi for one day if you want and then drop it. Not a problem. <laughs> hey, Osho. Tell you what you want to hear. Feed you ego candy and collect the money. Money, 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 honey. I'm here to give you the big show. Well, I've had people that were Osho and, and you're not as fun. Well, I'm not here to entertain you. Okay? I'm not charging you money to entertain you. I'm here to give the path, okay? And it's difficult. And if you can't hang, don't start, okay? If you're not ready to go the distance, don't start, okay? So that's what I wanted to put out there. You know, people are not ready for realization for the most part. Most of them want ego candy. They want to have something that's self-affirming that tells them you're okay the way you are. Okay. <laughs> they want to have the, the psychology person that goes, and how do you feel about that? You're absolutely right to feel that way. And they just keep taking their money they might as well talk into a tape recorder because that's what they'll get in every session. They don't actually give something to be done, how to get out of it, how to back out of it. It's like, well, how do you feel about that? In a genuine spiritual path, you're going to have to encounter yourself. You're going to have to sit there with your thoughts and sit there with, you know, the emotions that come up and really look at it and get to the bottom of it. And that's why people don't want to be in quietude. That's why they're going crazy at home because they've always got to have some distraction. I've got to have this to distract me and that to distract me. I can't be alone. I need to have people. I need to have interaction I need to have well then they would not do well on a spiritual path okay because you have to encounter yourself a genuine spiritual path you're doing it 24 7 people come and ask well how many how much time do I have to do this practice how much time do I have to do what do you mean how much time 24 7 you should be doing something for your spiritual practice and your growth to go forward. If you've got something compartmentalized, that's not taking you to realization, okay? Then you're not fully engaged, okay? You are not fully engaged at that point. Medicine time. <laughs> you're not fully engaged. And if you want the type of path where you have the opportunity to move forward, to get to realization, and don't think it's going to happen if you really, I have people say, well, what if I dedicate my full time in a year? I can have it, right? <laughs> On what planet? <laughs> you think Buddha got it in a year? Okay. Ramana got it pretty quick. Okay. Nisargadatta, I'm not sure how long he was, you know. Um, and here it took 40 years in this lifetime. And I was doing many lifetimes before that, preparing. It wasn't just this lifetime I started. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. My last lifetime, I went crazy. Okay. I was doing chode practice. And you invite the hungry ghosts to feed on your flesh. It became very real to me. I didn't see it as illusion. I bought into it and I went literally crazy in that lifetime. Okay. So it's not easy. This lifetime, I knew about that lifetime because it came in a vivid thing. And I had no idea about chode ceremony in this lifetime before that. No idea about it. After I had that really vivid dream and saw what was doing, I looked up and said, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And you'll get some confirmations along the way, like I went to, was in um, 
over where the Dalai Lama is in India, and I had them, the, uh, one of the guys, he's pretty famous, he's in some of the films, Tibetan films, and he goes, he was looking at me like, you were a monk in the last life. And I go, yeah, I know. And he was like, really surprised that I was a woman in this lifetime, because I was a man in that lifetime. I was male. And uh, um, so he was surprised that I was a woman in this lifetime. Um, but then again, you have the stories of uh, the woman, and she was enlightened. Name is not ringing a bell at the moment. Um, but she was out doing her practices out in the field. These guys saw her and they go, maybe next time you'll be born a male. She says, I'm already enlightened. <laughs> a fool. <laughs> I'm already there and I vow to come back only as a woman from now on to break through that stereotypical nonsense, basically. So again, you know, the path has nothing to do with male, female, what country, what body. People, some people think you have to be from India. Well, the golden age of India was long, long, long ago. It's not there now, okay? Otherwise, they wouldn't have rape on the rise and, you know, all these things going on. Caste system that's come into play. That wasn't there in the far past when they had the enlightened beings. They did not have a caste system then. That came later. Okay. So people that want to think that India is this grand light and you've got to be male and you've got to be Indian and you've got to be have a long beard and you've got to, you know, these stereotypical things. Good luck with that. And if you're looking for a real guru, a genuine guru, it's not going to be the ones out there touting name and fame and fortune and having hundreds and hundreds of followers. A real guru is there. It's going to challenge you what things they have out there. Okay. And they're not going to sit and feed you pablum all day. Okay. You have to be pick up the practices and be willing to put it into effect yourself. Okay? So I think that's about it. You know, what I wanted to say on um, so many misbegotten notions about spirituality and getting going the distance to realization and, uh, you know, wanting to go to these ones like Muji and the Satsang Sellers, Eckhart Tolle, and, uh, you know, think that you're going to get it from there. I've seen some really crazy stuff at Muji's. Okay, people screaming and just, I mean, histrionics and things going on. Okay. Um, not to say that some things don't happen. If you have a Kundalini kind of awakening, you're going to be... All of a sudden, find yourself doing yoga poses, hand mudras. You may be uh, coming out with some different um, vocalizations, etc. Uh, and that's part of the path. Okay? That's part of the path. But the histrionics and things going on there have nothing to do with Kundalini awakenings. It comes with people just psyched out on this stuff and you know thinking that that's the way and then it manifests out like that it's just okay okay there's stuff going on behind the scenes which people are not you know these gurus like this they have one face when they're on the stage and there's a totally different face 180 degrees away from it behind the scenes, okay, like Muji, he's one that, you know, oh, I'm so 
quiet and everything. And, and then behind the scenes can get very cutting, very nasty. Okay. Eckhart Tolle. He's one that, he's had a glimpse, but he's one that says, you know, he's got to stay away from people, not talk to anybody after he's done giving his talk. Because otherwise he puts on that hat and he starts, you know, coming down into duality. Well, that's not somebody that is, you know, that is uh, completed. If you have to hide away from people, because if you don't, your mind spin starts going again and you start rerouting, then you're not finished. Okay. And if he's going to be a teacher, he should be honest with that. But I caught that real quick when I was up in Rishikesh and he was there speaking and I heard him that day. And he said, yeah, when I'm, you know, done here, I go back to my thing and I stay there and, and I have to be away from everybody or else I start putting on these hats and I start, well, that's not somebody that's completed. That's not moksha. That's not being a liberated being. Okay. So I don't care how glorious they may talk about Advaita. If their mind is still going and it hasn't stopped and they can't be in different situations, you know, in the midst of regular life. And this is why I have my students do things. I don't have a regular ashram. We have an online ashram because you have to do it where you're at. Okay. Not come somewhere else where you, you want to have these talks all day and, you know. And if you have some, you know, standing, maybe a lot of these ones that are projecting, there is an energy. And when you get, a, this is another manipulation tactic that they use. Have a lot of people in a room, there's going to be a lot of energy generated. And if they are setting them up for a particular perspective, like one thing that Eckhart Tolle uses, and this is a manipulation technique, they talk very slowly, barely, but you can hear them. So you have to strain. And then it's a manufactured quietude. And because there's so much energy there, you know, from so many people being in a room, cramped in this room, they think it's some spiritual experience. <laughs> it's a manufactured technique. Okay. I'm going to tell you flat out what it is. Okay. Now I get a lot of flack back because I talk about it, you know, and I don't want to BS anyone. Nobody's got the time for BS and for drama. I want to see people progress on their paths. Okay. But it's got to be something that comes from your heart and just absolutely that you are going to push no matter what it takes, how long it takes. And I'm telling you, if you're walking the path in earnest, you're going to have some really difficult times to come up. Look at Christ, what he went through. You will go through those things. You will go through the temptation. Okay? All the things that Christ went through, he was showing the path. In the very end of it, when he's on the cross and his father, why have you forsaken me? That's what you feel like in that last second. And you have to, again, basically crucify yourself and put yourself in the hands of God and let totally go. Okay. And if you don't think Christ was afraid, and you'll feel that fear along the path. He was sweating blood. Now that's that's fear. If you're sweating blood, that's intense. Okay. It's intense. Okay, no, you're not gonna be have nails through your th 
wrists and all that stuff, and it wasn't through the hand, it was through the wrist. Through the hand, it won't hold. They put it through the wrist and put it down through the ankle this way, not on the top of the foot. They put it through the ankles on either side of the thing and put this big spike through your ankles. Okay, you don't have that, but you do feel like it's, in a sense, a crucifixion. You feel like, on my path, it felt the weight of the world. It was unbelievably excruciating. Okay. You'll have to fear. At some point in time, you will have what feels like an ultimate evil in your face. And during that time, I don't know how, my hair didn't turn white. It's in the middle of the room, just like this, just hiding. And oh my God. And you've got to learn these things yourself that you don't feed it. You don't fear it. It's like when Keanu Reeves was playing the little Buddha. And they have that scene where... The fireballs were coming. The marching was coming. All these things were coming. And then he's talking to the architect, the ego. The architect, the ego. That's what it's like. Not exactly like that, but it's the same basic thing that happens. Okay. So again, it's not a path for the weak. It's not a path for those that want to play, pick up something. Oh, I could do this an hour a day, wear white clothes, be a vegetarian, and think I'm so spiritually above everyone. And they've done nothing, no difficult soul searching anywhere. Okay. So they're in a spiritual playground. They're looking for a... Disneyland, a spiritual Disneyland. Okay, go for it if you want to. Okay. But it's, you know, again, like the Bible says, they're not going to feed you pablum all day. Okay. And those that start the path, if you got to look backwards, then you're not fit for it. Once you have your hand to the plow, you don't look backwards. Same thing like they had when they were leaving Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't look back. In other words, you've got to leave that filth, whatever it is, and come out of it. And you can't keep, well, hedging and looking back and say, you know, mm-mm. Because you're done at that point. They turned to a pillar of salt. They lost all their, the water, everything was drawn out of their body okay but it's to tell you if you're going to leave something behind you have to leave it behind like he also says you're going to leave your father and your mother okay the ones that are back there you got to leave them behind whatever they're doing they're doing that's their thing but you've got to you know like he says, you've got to follow me, okay? You can't keep hedging your bath with what's back there. Okay, they, they are there to pick up for their own existence, their own way forward. And if they're not feeling it, you can't change it, okay? Like he said, follow me. Can't keep looking back there. Otherwise, you're not ready. Okay. So I guess a little more did come out. <laughs> I never know which direction it's going to go. <laughs> it's what happens, you know. You, you, you get to that point, and you're done. And then things just, they come through you. Um, it's not like I'm sitting here thinking of, of all these things, what do I need to say? What well, it's not, it doesn't work like that. Okay, there's just this that silence here all the time. It comes directly from consciousness and then emerges out. And sometimes I have to go back and I look, listen to the thing myself, and go, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, that's interesting. Okay.
But yeah, I just wanted to tell people, you know, if you want a genuine spiritual path, and everybody says they want liberation, but really they don't. They just want to make their life better. They want to have a better handle on it. They want to feel more secure, that type of thing. But to give up their persona, to give up, you know, this idea, that you, ideation that you are this body, this form, okay? And when you go the whole way, you know you are not this body. I mean, even in the midst of the path, you'll have a lot of things. One second you're in the body, and next second you're out. Your consciousness is above the trees, seeing the distance to show you you are not this form. You are something that is, you know, it's, it's kind of like the brain programs the form. Consciousness programs the brain. Okay. The brain is not the one that brings all these things out. Consciousness programs the brain, which programs the form. Okay. And you have a lot of the doctors and stuff that have it backward. Everything is manufactured from the brain. Well, it's not. If that were the case, um, people that have had strokes and everything, it's important to get them to start doing things right away so they can do reconnections in that brain. How do those reconnections come? From consciousness. Okay. So anyway, when you're going the path, all these things you'll have happen. At some point, you know, anything you want to know, you can know. Okay. But, you know, it's only interesting for a time. You find out it really, you know, it's divisionary stuff. It doesn't matter. Okay. So along the way, you learn different things, and it'll seem so important at one time, and then all of a sudden it falls away. Then you go to the next level. You get there, and then that falls away, and then the next level. Okay. And when it, it comes to Kundalini and people say you focus on this chakra, then you focus on this chakra and it's there and it's there and it's going right straight up. That's You don't focus on colors. You don't focus on areas. You just, you know, it'll go from one area to another. Okay. So anyway, yeah, this is getting up there half an hour. So I think I'm just, at this, this point, we're just going to leave this here for now. Um, but I just wanted to put it out there for people that are thinking maybe they want a heavy-duty spiritual path. Or they keep asking me. People keep coming to me and asking me, well, what about this teacher? What about that teacher? What, why are you asking me? I'm a teacher. Do you know how kind of rude that is? <laughs> yeah, but I want I want an Indian one. You got to tell me an Indian one. When nine out of ten times I'm giving you ten times more than they will ever give you, and for nothing. <laughs> Whatever you want to give, you give. You don't give, you don't give. Okay, it's that way. But again, I keep telling people, if it is a person out there, they've got a big organization, okay? They're going to charge you for the path. They're charging you for this. They're charging you for that. Forget it. You're in spiritual Disneyland. And if that's what you want, you want to just go play, go play. But there are. You know, and I get somebody to say, keeps saying, I, I say I'm the only realized one on the planet. I don't say that ever, okay? There are, I'm sure, a number, maybe quite a few realized beings, but they don't go out and start big organizations like that. That's why I keep saying, you know, they're going to be more difficult to find. But if you are really 
serious about it, you really are wanting realization, you will come upon a teacher, a guru, a guide. But don't look at them from these big organizations. Okay. So that should clear that up from now on. You know, you don't have to ask me about this teacher, that teacher. If they have a big organization, a lot of self-promo out there, okay, I guarantee they'll have one face on stage and they're playing a game and a program and behind it, they will be something entirely different, okay? So anyway, much love and light to everyone. Please, please, please be safe out there. Use protection. COVID is nothing to mess around with. And if you want to keep your form long enough that you can do some work in the land of Divida here, then uh, please don't get sick with COVID. Okay. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope everyone has a wonderful, blessed evening. And may you go forward and find what it is you are seeking. Namaste.